Romans chapter 15, two more. Praise the Lord, right? This, uh, this is still, we're still on the last section of Romans. And who remembers from last week what the last section's about? Did you say it? You said it. The will of God. Now, that's our Bible student that's going to go to Colorado. Boo. <laughs> I'm happy, but sad at the same time. The cat's going to go to Bible college in Colorado. But uh, it's about the will of God. And uh, what does anybody see? If, here's another question. See if anybody remembers this. What did I say is, is the ultimate will of God? Chicken nuggets are on the line. <laughs> if you weren't here, no, you got an excuse. The, the ultimate will of God is just like every good parent. I mean, it's a parent. You want your kids to love and respect you, right? Don't you? You want your kids to love and respect you. Well, our Heavenly Father is the same way. He wants us to love and respect Him. So the first, well, Jesus said the first law is like this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second one is like this. What is it? Love your neighbor as yourself. So like every good parent, he wants, his, he wants his kids to love and respect him, but he also wants his kids to love and respect each other. And that's the will of God. It really is. It's not that complicated. He wants us to love him and love others. And, and that's what we see here. This is the, the uh, Romans 14 was about that, and this is going to carry on into that. Um, Nothing makes me happier when, when the family's together, my kids are together, and there's harmony and unity in the house, and they're laughing, and they're joking, and it's just a wonderful time. And last week, if you remember, we talked about the gray areas of the Bible. It was about the gray areas and, and convictions and, and, and things that, and Paul called people who were sensitive in their convictions, like they were they were. They had all these convictions, and they were sensitive about them, and they judged the others about their convictions. He called them weak in the faith. And I thought, oh, man, when he said that, when I read that, I thought it kind of poked me in the heart and said, sometimes you can be a little weak in the faith because you can be a little judgmental. Anybody else like that? Uh Uh-huh. And that, I don't get mad at me. Paul's the one that wrote it under the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I felt the pinch when I, when I read that because I've got some weak spots. But I also want to clarify this tonight, that even though there's, there's gray areas that, that Paul is talking about, there's also black and white areas. Amen? There's black and white areas. And if you want to, just for a real quick, quick reference, we'll flip over to 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Just want you to see that there is black and white areas as well, and that things that we don't cross, and it says this, it says, uh, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who practice, uh, who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these, say none of these, will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you was once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy when you you were made right with God by calling on the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Corinthians was one of those churches. Uh, Brenda would like me to go to Corinthians next to teach, just to go through the Paul's teachings, but I'm praying about it, okay? But Corinthians was one of those churches. Remember when we, were, when we, when we went through Acts, we talked about Corinth. They were just an cha- uh, ungodly church that was off the chain. They had all the gifts of the spirits operating in the church, but at the same time, Paul had to set them in order because it was just chaos. And so that's what he's addressed there. He, he, there's, there's gray areas, but there's black and white areas. And he said, don't fool yourself. Amen? 
And so, but gray areas is like wearing blue jeans in church. That's a gray area. You see what I'm saying? That's a conviction. It's not something that's going to send you to hell. Do you understand? When I, and uh, uh, I remember, I thank God the Lord delivered me from some things in my life and I've grown. But can you imagine putting Kathleen in a dress? <laughs> I've said that. It was a, it was a war every Sunday to get to get ready, and I, I remember that it was just. And, but then it finally, I just got to the point where it says, "Just get her to church. I don't care if she's wearing jeans. Just get her there." And and look, we all wear jeans now. It's not it's not a. Uh, so you were right. Oh no. <clears throat> oh. Oh, Lord, my God. <laughs> yeah. So last week we talked about the gray areas about, and he, he specifically addressed what they ate and drank, what they were eating and drinking. And, um, and you know, eating and drinking is not a sin. And Paul said that. He said, I am myself and am, am, am okay. I'm all right with eating and drinking anything. I'm okay with it. But, but there again, you can also take anything into excess. Okay? So I need to, you need to caution this. You can make anything an idol. Amen? And uh, gluttony is a sin. It is. Being drunk with wine is a sin. Amen? Ephesians 5.18 says this. It says, do not be drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? But the choice that we eat, what we eat and drink, we have freedom in that. But if you, if you don't think food is a big deal, go on a long fast and see... <laughs> <coughs> no, sorry. <clears throat> See if you don't start dreaming of cheeseburgers dancing in your head. <clears throat> Amen? You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Rick? That's right. <clears throat> and uh, here's the point. Don't take anything, don't take anything to extremes and don't overindulge and make an idol or a stumbling block. You can do it with anything. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Remember that? The first thing that pops in your mind about Sodom and Gomorrah is that it was destroyed because of homosexuality. That's what's the first thing that comes in your mind. How many, how, many, how many does that pop in your mind when you think about it, okay? But let me read something else about Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? It's in Ezekiel 16, 49. It says this, Sodom's sin, Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness. While the poor and the needy suffered outside her door. It didn't say homosexuality at all, did it? Did you catch that? That's something, didn't it? And so we've got to be careful that we don't make anything an idol. And Paul said this. He said, everything is lawful, but not everything is profitable. Amen? Okay. All right. We're going to move on. So we're going to start with chapter 15. And this section here uh, is titled in my Bible. I don't know about yours. Um, if you've got different versions, it might be titled differently. But this one in my Bible is titled, Living to Please Others. Boy, that's a tough, that's a tough title right there, isn't it? Just, you know it's going to be tough. So here we go. Romans 15, starting at verse 1, it says, We who are strong must can be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live for himself. And as the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures Give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. To be a mature Christian, 
is to rise above just feeling the freedom of being able to do which as you please. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus come to set you free. Paul said that. I can eat anything. I can drink anything. But if it's going to cause my brother or sister to stumble, I am going to do, I'm going to go out of my way to try to, to live to help people to them achieve a more, be more mature. When's the last time that we've, you've done that? Ask yourself. I've got to, you know, sometimes I feel convicted when I read that because there are times when I thought, well, that's their problem. You ever done that? I can do that. That's, what's, that's their problem. What are they, it's, what's their issue? But we've got to learn to be considerate. I believe the church has got, here, here's the problem with, with saying things like this, that um, the church has gotten so lax on not having any standards that the con, this concept is, is hard to comprehend. It really is. The church in general has gotten so lax about the standards that we that they they live to that they they try to please the Lord that many times when you look across and you say I don't want to offend somebody it it sounds like a uh, a foreign language so let's go on to to live a Christian life in the way that puts others ahead of yourself can can you do that? That's the thing you need to ask yourself. Can I live my life and put people above what I think sometimes? Okay. If you want to be in any kind of leadership, you really got to do this. I, we, we had a, a deacon meeting uh, about a month ago, and, and I presented it to some guys, and I said, look, as a deacon and as a pastor, you are going to be on display for the, for the whole congregation. And you're gonna you're gonna have to live to a different level, and and if you don't, and I see things in, in your life, you're giving you're giving me permission to come into your life, and you're giving your brothers permission to speak into your life, and say, hey, I noticed some things that that just aren't a good example. And and then I told him, I said, hey, look, this is not a mandatory thing. If you don't want it, if you don't want to be under scrutiny, don't do it. But as Christians, you don't have, you know, as every person in here, we don't really have that option. And when you, when you think about it, every one of us, we need to live our lives so that we're not stumbling blocks to others. Amen? And that's not just to the people in the church, but that's your children. Some of our children, you know, some of your children may not be saved. And they may be living out in, this, out in the world. And also, maybe a spouse isn't saved. And if you go home and, and talk bad about the church or you talk bad about things, you'll never get your spouse saved. Amen? I don't know. I got off a, on a ramp there, didn't sit somewhere. <clears throat> okay, verse 5. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, who gives this patient encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all, then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I pray that. You pray, pray God give you patience and encouragement. Well, that's tough. Number seven. I would like to say it gets easier, but it doesn't. It says, therefore, accept, say accept. Remember, that was in chapter 14 as well, as well that word accept. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews and to show that God is true and that his promises he made to, his, to their ancestors. He also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote. Okay, now we're entering in here to verse, verse 9. I know he said that Christ came as a servant. 
and we have to accept. He's setting up a whole other thought pattern here. Therefore, accept each other. And then Christ came as a servant. Now, listen, he said the word Gentile. That's a dirty word to the, to the Jews. Do you remember in, in Acts when he was giving that speech and, and all he had to do, they were listening to him? He did this a couple times in the book of Acts. He was, he would, Paul would be giving his speech and the, they would get quiet and they would listen to him. And as soon as he said the word Gentile, it erupted into an, a riot. Remember that? And so watch how many times he says Gentiles. I, I, have, it, I have it highlighted when I, when I typed it out. It says, so he also came to the Gentiles so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, for this I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. In another place it is written, rejoice with his people, you Gentiles. And yet again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Praise him, all the people of the earth. And in, other pla- and in another place, Isaiah said, the heir to David's throne will come and he will rule over the Gentiles and they will place their hope on him. See the will of God. Remember we're in that last section, the will of God. Don't forget that. Keep that in mind. The will of God is for us Gentiles to know who he is as well. Praise the Lord. You should be saying praise the Lord on that part. Because uh, without Jesus and, and, and people like Paul, you know, this had to be really hard for Paul when he first heard that the, the, the good news was for the Gentiles as well. They were trained that they weren't not to like the Gentiles. The word Gentile was, it was just a dirty word to them. They despised it. They caused a riot. And uh, they hated the way the Gentiles ate. They hated their culture. They, they, they even, the town of Samaria, if they couldn't walk through it, they would try, they would do their best. They would walk around Samaria before they would go through it. That's why it's so amazing when Jesus went to the woman at the well in Samaria. That's why it's so important to see that. And it was, it was racism to the extreme, but God had laid down the foundation from the beginning. He told them don't intermingle with the Gentiles. But then he, they took it after Jesus came and, 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 and said that they just still despised him. And so you can see how this would be really hard for him. Can you see that? And so let's see, verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will, complete, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need it. I'm, I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to be preaching on this Sunday. So just, just I, I pray every person here, you just get ready. Just, just pray, Lord, let me receive whatever you have for me. This Sunday, come looking because I'm, I'm going to be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And anytime you come across the power of the, of the Lord, it's always mentioning the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need him in our life. We do. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to love somebody and, and, and the super, just be supernatural, have that supernatural love that God has without the power of the Holy Spirit. We need it. We need him. So verse 14, I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. You know these things so well that you can teach each other all about them. I believe that the body of Christ has the very best counselors. I'm going to leave it right there. Don't you? I believe that the body of Christ has the best counselors. I, 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 I sometimes get so frustrated when people in church, they, they'll run to everywhere else to get counsel. You'll ask the most ungodly friend you have, what do you think? When you are surrounded by godly people that you know some people that pray. You know, not everybody, but there's, there's people in your life that you know that they hear from the Lord. And you, you will reach out to everybody else before you reach out to someone that's walking with the Lord. I'm telling you, 
the first place to go is the Lord himself. But if you need a human, you know, some, some wisdom put in it, go to somebody that you know that's godly. Amen? Don't go to Billy Bob at work that, if there's somebody here named Billy Bob, I didn't mean it as an insult, but if don't go to them that because they're just they're just a nice person but they're not living for the Lord. They're going to give you advice that the world's going to give. And it's so important. I believe that the best counselors are in the church. They just are. Whether you like it or not, whether you like them or not, they're there. Find somebody that walks with the Lord. Sometimes the people that walk closest to the Lord are sometimes the most abrasive. You ever notice that? Because they tell you things that that is going to help you and sharpen you, and they're not going to like be real smooth and just kind of make it feel real nice. <laughs> Amen. It's verse 15. Even so, I have been bold enough to write about some of these points, knowing that you all need this, and all you need is this reminder. For by God's grace, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you, what do you say, Gentiles. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's all over, all these, the, so many times he's bringing it across about the Gentiles. I bring you the good news so that I might present you as an acceptable offering to God, made holy by the Holy Spirit. So first he says that the Holy Spirit's the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you get that? And now he's saying you're made holy by the Holy Spirit. I, you know, there's so many reasons to seek more of the Holy Spirit. To seek to surrender your life. That's why I preach that message to empty ourselves out. If you empty yourselves out, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's more room. But if there's so much of you in there, there's not enough room for the Holy Spirit. You know, John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase. And, <clears throat> and Jesus said that no greater man born of a woman that was, holy, was uh, John the Baptist. But the Holy Spirit here, he says, will make you holy. The word holy means set apart. I tell you what, if you walk close with the Holy Spirit and you get filled with the Holy Spirit, he will separate you from the things of this world. You won't feel right going to the club. Amen? Listen to me. You won't feel right when you, walk, when you try to do something that your flesh loves. He will be, you will be haunted by the Holy Spirit. You'll be haunted by the Holy Ghost. I believe that. That's that conviction. That's right. He'll lead you. He, the, 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 one other thing the Bible says about the Holy Spirit is he was sent to convict the world of sin. And so we've got to this, let the spirit of holiness do his work in us. And it was for the Gentiles. Isn't that so good? Remember in Acts when, when Peter was on the rooftop and he was fasting and, and he saw that, that sheet came down. He got really hungry and, and saw this vision of a bunch of animals coming down on a sheet. And he saw, he saw cheeseburgers dancing in his head and said, and the Lord spoke to him and said, take it and eat it. And he said, no, Lord, I've never done that. And, and, but, but then he went and God showed him that there was a man across town. The Bible says that he was a godly man, a God-fearing man. Amen. And Cornelius, and he was praying to know more of the, of the Lord. And so Paul, or Peter went and told him about it. And while Peter was speaking, he didn't even get to the part to give the altar call. That's what I love about it. He didn't even give the altar call. And he said the Holy Spirit fell upon him right there when he was just talking about the Holy Spirit. And so it's so important for us to see this. It sets us apart. And so that's, it's good. Come hungry for the Holy Spirit Sunday. I'm ready for God to move. Amen. I've been praying. I've been, I've been seeking the Lord for it. So 17. So I, have a, so I have a reason to be enthusiastic about all Christ Jesus has done through me in, the, in my service to God. Yet I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I worked among them. 
they were convinced by the power of the miraculous signs and wonders and the power and by the power of God's spirit. Well, we need that. Here we go again. You see it? It's all over the word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. It says that the Gentiles were convinced by the signs and the wonders and the power of the Holy Spirit. It convinced them. And it's not a bad thing. It's not that we're going to seek in a sign. We seek the Holy Spirit. When you seek the Holy Spirit, signs and wonders will follow. These signs will follow those who believe. It's not the main thing. The main thing is Him. Amen? In this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Icarium. I think, Elicrium. Elicrium? I think so. No record of what Paul, there's no, 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 no record in Acts about him going to Elicrium. It's actually the Slavic states. And so I, I had to look that up where that was because I didn't, I've never saw that before. I mean, I've read it before, but. I didn't remember in our Acts study where he went there. So he didn't. It's not mentioned in Acts where he went there. But uh, I thought that was interesting. So verse 20. My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard. Rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. I have been following the plain spoken. I have been following the plan of plan spoken of in the scriptures where it says those who have never been told about him will see and those who have never heard of him will understand in fact my visit to you has been delayed so long because I have been preaching in these places I like this where Paul says I, my ambition is to preach the gospel where Christ has never been heard I, I, we, I've often thought that we're in America, we're so spoiled. We have so many avenues for the gospel. I think we've become gospel hardened. I really do. Uh, we've got podcasts. We've got TV. We've got churches on every corner. Um, you've got Bibles. You've got translations out the, you know, all over the place. And so we become so gospel hardened. And, and wouldn't it be awesome and I've seen this I, this is one of the reasons I love new believers there's just something about it give me somebody that's ground zero I'm telling you they they just they will they will they have a hunger for the word they don't have any preconceptions I'll be honest with you I'm glad I started a church rather than took a church over I've got to preach this church from day 1 and so <laughs> Um, and some of the, the, sometimes the hardest ones to deal with is the ones that have sat in church their whole life and been taught some things that are, I, I've, I've been told some things that people have been taught and you're just like, really? You've been taught that? And, and, and where did that come from? And then, and then I got, then, then this is the thing it is. I always go back and pray and ask the Lord, is that me, Lord? Because I was raised in a church. And so I want to make sure I get it right for myself as well. And so I, I, I always ask myself, Lord, show me. Amen? I, I, I think it's sometimes so much easier when to, to, to help somebody grow and to teach somebody when they haven't had a whole bunch of legalistic um, denomination teaching applied to them. All right. I got quiet. I believe that, though. I've lived that. So that's not just a theory. I've watched it. And so, verse 23. But now I have finished my work with these regions. And after all these long years of waiting, I am eager to visit you. I am planning to go to Spain. And when I do, I will stop off in Rome. And after I have enjoyed your fellowship for just a little while, you can provide for my journey. But before I come, I must go to Jerusalem to take a gift to the believers there. For you see, the believers of Macedonia and Arcania have eagerly taken up an offering for the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. I find this great, don't you? 
that the, the Gentiles took up an offering for the Jews in Jerusalem. Isn't that wonderful? We should, we should be uh, those kind of believers that just want to help wherever we can. Uh, I know our church has, has uh, see Israel, we have an Israel flag back here and we pray for Israel. But Israel right now is not saved. I want you to know that. They, they, they're still looking for the Messiah. They've rejected Jesus, the majority. Now, there's some that have been saved, and, but, but it's very few compared to the mass majority. But, but we're going to support and we're going to do everything we can to try to help show the love of Jesus any way we can to God's people. Amen? I think one of the, the biggest revelations that I had personally is 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 when the rapture takes place if the church is raptured out okay whether you're pre middle pre post middle wherever when the church is taken out um you know america will collapse in on itself if you take if you took all the christians out of america could you imagine how fast this country would just fold up but then think about israel the only one that's showing really love and light to israel right now is christians and if they were gone too, the, the, it would be so dark, but they'll remember. And so that's why we should show as much love as we can right now. I really believe that. That's why we should work while it's day. Give as much as we can, try to, try to support and show love as hard as we can for God's people. And so, um, but anyway, if you remember that the... The Jews that turned to believing in Jesus immediately experienced persecution. Um, so why they took a, a, uh, an offering up? Because you wonder why these Gentiles in another country sent an offering back to Jerusalem. Well, first, the, the message of Jesus and the gospel came out of, of Jerusalem, okay? So it came out of Israel. And so they were so grateful for this good news that they said, let us help support but if you remember, remember when we went through the book of, uh, of Acts, and when, when, they, when you became a Christian and you were a Jew, after the day of Pentecost, it was not good news for you as far as physical. You understand? You were persecuted. Almost from day one, you, en you entered into persecution. They would, uh, you were ostracized from your family if you had a family business and say, you were the only one that got saved, you and your family. Well, your family was separated. Say, we're not dealing with them anymore. It'd be like a slap in the face to all your relatives. And so businesses were, were, went, went tanked, and, and persecution came. And, and, and so the church struggled greatly. And that's why they sent an offering, because they, they, were, they were just having all kinds of financial issues because of that. They were blacklisted. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? So, verse 27, they were glad to do this, talking about the Gentiles. They were glad to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them. Since the Gentiles receive the spiritual blessings of the good news from the believers in Jerusalem, they feel that the least they can do in return is to help them financially. As soon as I have delivered this money and completed this good deed of theirs, I will come to see you on my way to Spain. And I'm sure that when I come, Christ will richly bless our time together. Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to join in my struggle by praying to God for me. Do this because of your love for me given to you by the Holy Spirit. There's another thing that there's another plug for the Holy Spirit. Did you see it? Because of your love for me given to you by the Holy Spirit, I pray that I will be rescued from those in Judea who refuse to obey God. Pray also that the believers there will be accept, willing to accept the donation I'm going to take, I'm taking to Jerusalem. Then by the will of God, I will be able to come to you with a joyful heart and we will be an encouragement to each other. And now may God, who gives us his peace, be with you all. Amen. Paul made this last request. I got a couple, just a few remarks about that. 
Paul made this last request for prayer, that everything would go well. Now, we studied Acts. We spent about a year in Acts. Remember that? It was a long Bible study. Did it go well? For Paul, Harrison, we have this connection, buddy. What happened? Yeah, I do too. Did she remember? Okay, so he went. Remember everywhere Paul said he was going to go in the book of Acts at the end. Remember he was getting ready to go to the end. And everywhere he was going, people would start prophesying. Remember that? Remember one man took his robe and he tied himself and said, this is what they're going to do to you, Paul. They're going to tie you up and they're going to throw you in prison. Remember that? So in Romans, he's not, this has not happened yet. So he's already, someone probably already prophesied to him because he said it's a struggle. Remember that? Um, Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to join in my struggle by praying to God for me. So Paul's already struggling in his spirit, I believe, because he knows he's going to be imprisoned. And he's praying that the people in Judea, he'll be delivered from them, but that did not happen. He was delivered to them, if anything. Remember that? That riot on the steps, they literally had to pick him up. And then for several years, he ended up just explaining his case. Um, Justin made a great point, uh, was it a couple weeks ago when we had the authority? Remember the big authority uh, uh, conversation? And, and we were like, we can't, we, you know, I, you just, I was like poking a bear right there. When I, when I talked about authority, given, given, you know, respect to the authority. <laughs> How many of you remember that conversation? That's right. It was like poking a bear. But Justin brought that, that, that story up. He said, you remember when Paul stood before Festus and he had been in prison for like three years already? And he, he, he still was very honorable to Festus. He said, oh, honorable Festus. And so... Sometimes prayer don't go the way we think we want it to go, but that doesn't mean God's not working. Amen? And um, he, so he, there was three parts of that prayer. Pray that he would be rescued from those in Judea, which he was delivered to them and then went to prison. And it was house arrest for a long time, and then he appealed to Caesar. And then he, he prayed, he said, pray that they'll be willing to accept the offering. Now, I don't remember how that went. I don't think it, I don't think it really mentioned how that went. Uh, evidently, the offering was, went okay. And then the third thing was that pray that he would be able to come uh, to Jerusalem with a, with a cheerful heart, but that he would come to Rome. And I'm sure Paul didn't think, pray that I would go to Rome on a prison ship. You know, and so how many times think about that when you pray for something and it doesn't end up the way you think it should end up? Just know that God's working. Amen. Even when you can't see it, even when you can't feel it, that's one of the songs. I love that song, Waymaker. And I remember the first time Kat sang that. There's something about singing a new song sometimes that just stirs a person's heart. And, and, I, and we were singing that song, Waymaker, for the first time, and you got to the bridge. Remember that? Even though I can't feel it, you're working. Even though I can't see it, you're working. There's just something about it. When you start putting your faith and you proclaim, I know you're working on my behalf. And you pray that way. And, and that's, what, that's basically what Paul was doing. He said, pray with me. I'm struggling, but pray with me. And he still got to Rome. And so uh, I think that I heard that in several different testimonies tonight that I'm giving praise to the Lord that things didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen, but it still, God worked it out. Did you hear that a couple times in the testimony? So I think that was one of the biggest test takeaways if you want to take away something tonight is first live your life not as a stumbling block. Whatever it takes to help your brother and sister get to heaven. Amen? Don't compromise the word. Don't compromise your life for anybody as far as the word. But, but don't live your life offensively. 
And then the second thing is, is, is when, even when you don't see it, God's working. Amen? Paul did go to Rome. He spent several years in jail. And that prison ship that he went on got shipwrecked, remember? And so sometimes our prayers get answered not the way you think they're going to be, but just trust and know that God is good. Amen? Amen. We got one more chapter next week. Um, Has anybody got something they want to share about tonight? Everybody at once. I didn't think in a million years that I'd be sitting where I'm sitting right now. Uh, they give me up for dead one time. They called all the family in when I had COVID. They said uh, I'd been on the vent for 21 days. Uh, they called the family in on Tuesday and they said, uh, we're going to take him off the vent Thursday, and then he'll die and go on out. Wednesday, I came out of it. I couldn't yeah. talk, couldn't walk, couldn't use my hands. Had to learn to walk all over again. Had to learn to use my hands again. Couldn't play music, couldn't sing. And I want to thank God that, I, that I'm where I'm at today. He has saved my life. They said I would be on oxygen tanks the rest of my life because of black lung where I worked in the coal mines. I haven't had no oxygen in over two years. Uh, I'm breathing better. I'm doing better. I'm getting back stronger. I'm back to shoeing horses. And uh, without God's help, Tim, that could have never happen. Amen. One time, Jesus was asleep on a pillow on a ship, and there arose a great storm. And his disciples woke him, and they were afraid. They were scared. And Jesus said, you have but little faith. And he said unto the, the wind, be still. And he calmed the sea. And they went on and rejoiced. And, and, it, and in that scripture in Mark, it said, and all around them were the other little ships. They weren't the only one that saw that. All these people saw what happened, that what our God done in our life. And he has really, really calmed the storm for me. And, and uh, I thank him for out where I'm at. Today I was so tired they delivered my tiny house today so I'm not homeless anymore and I worked till right up time to jump in the chair and go to church and I, I was so tired and exhausted and that scripture kept coming to my mind first seek you the kingdom of God then all these other things will be added unto you mm-hmm. and I thank God for what he was done I was in church in Beckley and really didn't know how I was going to make it back to Tennessee. I said, my old truck's hard on gas. But maybe, maybe if I can make it to Jonesboro, I can call somebody to come get me or whatever. And there was a guy who shook my hand. He put a piece of paper in my hand. And he said, Larry, listen. He said, I don't want you to open this till you start home. And when I opened it, it was his name. And he said, Larry, if you ever need me for anything, here's my phone number. No matter what time of day it is, no matter what time of night it is, and inside that piece of paper was a $100 bill. And you know, no matter what, God will provide a way. If you'll just trust in him and follow him, and sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's tough when you want life to go one way and he wants it to go another way. Never doubt what Jesus Christ ain't working his way in your life for you. Amen. Amen. That's good. else? Amen. All right. I just want to say that I thank God for loving me and showing me things that even though we get sidetracked and through our ignorance, um, he 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 brings things to our attention to where we know we should be. Amen. That's good. Pastor Tim Goss here. Thank you so much for joining us. 
at, at Crossroads Cowboy Church for service. I hope the Lord touched your heart. I know that he's, he's, he is here and he's leading us and guiding us. And maybe you were watching and the Holy Spirit really pulled on your heart. and You never gave your heart to Christ or maybe you just want to recommit your life to Christ. Well, it's as easy as asking him, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I need, I repent of my sins. I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that you came and you died for me and for my sins that I couldn't pay for. And uh, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and conf or confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that salvation shall come to you. And so if you did that, just then just start at living for him. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, show me, lead me and guide me. So excited for you if you did that. If, uh, if you would like to, to like and subscribe our channel, we would love that be able to share with others, maybe your friends. If you know somebody that doesn't know Jesus or, or they just need an encouraging word, um, just make sure you like and subscribe and share it with them. It's the easiest way you can do it. So thankful again that you are uh, joining us. Hope to see you again next time. God bless you.